Um, I'm Jane McKenzie, and I need whatever support we can you have because this isn't a one-man thing at all. So uh, we're all part of the circle. Um, and yes, yeah, she's done that purely because um, of my medical background, which is pharmacy. And um, all of us are knowledgeable. Nobody, one person knows more than anyone else, really. And uh, I really enjoy it when there's a comment or a tag, um, my child has chicken pox, or what do I do about water, or something like that. And then there's suddenly like about 10 suggestions. I mean, that's just beautiful. And we need to find a way also of uh, harnessing onto that information so we've got it as our backup and a database type of a thing. So that's really nice. So I encourage you all to come with your questions. I'll be going into Facebook once a day. Okay. So um, I think we'll be answered and everything <laughs> on that. <laughs> Only once a day. There's a thousand other things that are happening. Um, so let's, yeah, let's see how that goes. Um, and then yes, we're going to have a talk once a month or once every two months. We have I'll give you information on, on next month's talk at the end of this. So please, all of you are also um, healers in your own right, have your own internal healing systems, um, know people that are in the natural plant and healing world, even chiropractors, <laughs> reflexologists, it doesn't have to be plant-based. Um, please send the names forward so we can really um, get information out there and make this um, a really powerful network where um, other people actually come in and find answers and things. That's the way I see it. And um, yeah, any suggestions will be really welcome. So I just want to kick off with a bit of a background so we can get a framework in terms of where I come from. I do have a pharmacy degree. I also have an MBA. I have an international certificate in nutrition. And I'm trained in skio and blah, blah. So I've been in this health area for the, over the last 30 years. And um, in most instances, I have kind of done the 360 degree loop. And most people that come and see me, I consult in nutrition. Um, most times, nine times out of 10, um, there is an issue with nutrition. We are what we eat. Our food is our medicine. Our medicine is our food. And that's Hippocrates's statement. So I really do draw a lot on that. Um, so a lot of people are sick because of how they're eating and a lot of it is really misinformation and poor marketing and things like that. So that is a basis with all the other uh, health aspects added to it. Um, uh, so I consult in nutrition, I do talks and workshops and things like that as well at homes and at, at businesses. Um, I also practice what I preach, so if you come to my house, you're not really going to find, uh, everyone's laughing. Green yeah, you'll get a chocolate smoothie or a green juice or something like that, and yeah, my fridge is not really the normal fridge, and my pantry's also not really the normal pantry, but anyway, so everything's in bottles and <coughs> like that. But um, everyone's at their own place, and um, everything's welcome, and also if, in terms of my guidance to people, I work individually. So it's a personal nutritional profile. And where you are, we work with the best available nutrients for individual people. Allied to the nutrition work, I was very fortunate to meet um, Alan Rosenberg, who's been in biodynamic agroecology for the last over 40 years. Biodynamic is a Rudolf Steiner method of farming. And it's beyond organic. It, in it includes the stars and the cosmos. And the planets, and um, but it incorporates organic permaculture, crusa farming, and everything. And he taught me really a lot. And uh, one of the things I really realised is that um, we're part of a living sphere. So it's the soil, the nature, the animals, and ourselves. And we need to be interconnected. Obviously, then connected as well to to the cosmos. Um, and many people are ill today because they're not connected. So what do I mean by that? We're constantly in shoes. We never really touch the ground. We never touch the ground with our hands. Um, I do gardening courses, which are really fun, and as a means to becoming healthy and sustainability, of course. And it really also surprises me. I'll be gardening there, and I get really into it and planting and everything. And you know, sometimes people say to me, Jane, you know what? I don't remember the last time I touched soil. And then I don't remember the last time I took my shoes off. 
Some people walk to the shower with their shoes on shower, put their feet back in their shoes and go to their bed, take their feet out of the, their shoes. So part of being sick, and it relates to our, our hormone talk as well, is actually being grounded and earthed. And I have some organite which I'll talk about. So those are my gardening courses. We make that rich black gold compost. There's methods for that. We put in volcanic rock dust and rock phosphate and effective microorganisms and things to really fortify the soil. And you get really huge plants, which are you just need like one spinach leaf and you've got a juice already. So that's perfect and that really works. So that's part of a, a, an area as well. And then my home is off-grid and sustainable. And don't think this is all, all happening one year. It was, <laughs> this has been over quite a few years. So I'm off grid, I'm not uh, beholden to ESCOM, and hence we might have to have some of our talk there in future, but anyway, at least we've got a backup hand. <laughs> um, so everything is, is, is off grid, and then I've got water storage, I've got water enliveners and um, recycling and things like that as well. So that's just really where I fit in, and I do walk the talk, as I say to you. So well, you're welcome to ask me any questions, and also I think in regard to the sustainability area, nobody knows until they've actually installed it, <laughs> what it's actually about. And a lot of people have got a lot of advice about inverters and panels and no, no, no. And until you've actually installed it, that's when you really know um, yeah, what it's all about. Okay, so now I'm not going to talk to you because that's just lecturing and stuff. We need to make this as interactive. You need to ask your questions. I hope you brought them. I'll answer them if I can. If I can't, I'll go and do research. And um, so, yeah, let's make it as interactive as you as as we can. Um, okay, we are right. So, what I'm going to start off with is the sex hormone profiles. And I will move on to a couple of the, the, the hormonal neurotransmitters, the dopamine and serotonin, because they link. So what I've put together here is, can everyone see? Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. This is our framework. I've done my research, and this is how it all works. And I'm going to go through each one to demystify this whole thing. I have products that I've researched that come from the best importers in the world all certified for content, mm -hmm. bacteria, fungus, all those um, micro or microbes, heavy metals, everything certified. So it's not um, coming Those from. of you that, that can't see, we can email you these slides. And also, um, we can make a video. So we can email you the link to the Yeah, absolutely. We've got emails and things as well. So no, don't just listen and then we'll demystify it and then yeah, ask your question. So this is for men and women today, okay? Because everybody has, um, we all have all these hormones and it's about getting them into balance and actually demystifying it because I, get, I have the situation where people come to me and they've been to the endocrinologist, they've been to the GP, they've been to the homeopath, they've been to uh, whatever, and no one knows who's doing what. So the GP's got them on cortisol, and the endocrinologist has got them on um, progesterone, and no one knows who's doing what. So this poor body also doesn't know what it's doing, and shame, the poor person is still suffering from menopause, fatigue, andropause, depression, not living the life they need to be living. And this is what this is all about. Um, I call it high frequency living, uh, perpetual harmonic renewal. And all these products, and there's even more there, are on a much higher vibration because if we get there, then the lower astral fears, anger, anxiousness and stuff can't actually get to us because they won't. So it's about raising our vibrational level. What does that sound like? Okay, yeah, and getting a, a raised consciousness permanently. So getting these transmitter pathways working properly so that actually the serotonin, melatonin one, because we produce, for example, a, a DMT, getting it producing it for us naturally and how it should in the, in the right amounts 
getting the melatonin and the serotonin and the dopamine in the right amounts so that we are perpetually on a higher conscious level and by doing that we also need to eat the appropriate food to do that and then we are more moral it brings in moral thoughts okay does that make sense okay so just stop me wherever you go so i want to this is where we're going to go i'm going to do coconut oil and and maca powder coconut oil is the beginning of the chain of all of this i'm going to give you the foods and then the nutritional herbal uh, substances that help as well. So that's a favorite. We're going to go then to pregnant alone. And then we're going to go this route. I'll go there at the end. And then I'm going to go to DHEA. What you see underneath is the food, the, the herb, the direct herb that nature put on the earth that many um, uh, pharmaceutical companies have taken that active ingredient amplified it, uh, separated the molecule, added hydroxy uh, atoms to it, etc, etc, to have an enhanced effect in the body, only to find that it will also have a side effect on the kidney or the liver or whatever. Uh, valerian is a good example, and I think Penny has some here. Valerian um, is a plant, it's a medicinal plant, and it's where Valium came from. As a plant, it's absolutely beautiful. It's tranquilizing, it's calming, it makes you sleep, all the things that Valium does, naturally, how it should be, without amplifying anything and having the OST, without having the side effects. All of these things do that, and um, naturally. But we need to also just be aware. I mean, we're not going to go and you know have the whole bottle in one go, for example, because that's just too much. Okay, so I can come back to this any time you like. Sorry, Jane. What exactly is preg uh, pregnant? Pregnant is the precursor to these two. Okay. So when you treat the body, people will say, okay, fine, my thyroid's really bad. I've got a hyperactive or a hypoactive thyroid, or whatever. So what happens is this, they then get the medication for this. But actually, if you go down the chain, it's better because by doing this, the body shuts down these pathways. It doesn't then take these things to make it. Same with um, if, if you give cortisol, um, you then stop that happening. So the further back you can go on the chain, the better. Now, um, <clears throat> pregnenolone is directly, uh, uh, comes out of coconut oil and some of the other plants, which I'll show you now, plants and foods. So I just think the most obvious thing is to come here. Make sure that you're getting enough of, I'll, I'll go there now, of, of, the, of the foods and the plants that are supporting you and then let your body decide. So when these levels are up, let your body decide by itself what you need. Okay. But what's very important with all of these and all diseases are our lifestyle factors. Our stress, our exercise, our sunlight, our water, our air, our re rest, sleep, meditation, things like that. Uh, they affect all of us directly. So we're going to go as far back on the chain as possible. So pregnenolone is just really, it's the active ingredient in coconut oil. So we can come back here. Thanks for that, the great question. Here was what I said to, said to you. So we want to be having high-frequency nutrient-dense food. And hence, if you grow your veggies in this way with really enhancing the soil, so food growing has got to do with the soil. Same as us, we've got our own soil and compost here. So if you are feeding that soil, volcanic rock um, dust, rock phosphates, you're giving effective microorganisms, which are necessary for breakdown of minerals and decomposition of, of the soil um, into humus and so on, and um, giving the right compost, then that plant can take up the nutrients that it needs for us, our minerals. So, there's a little bit of a um, misconception here. We need to eat, the plant is our source of food, not the ground. The ground feeds the plant and the plant feeds us and animals. Good example is calcium supplements. Who takes calcium supplements? Okay. All right, go home and read the bottle. If it's not a plant state, calcium. Hmm? Food state? 
if, if okay, sorry, thank you. Yeah, food state means coming from a plant, not coming out of the ground. So in other words, it's not limestone, it's not dolomite, it's not coral out of the ocean. It's come out of a plant. Our body can absorb that and do what it needs to do in terms of our bones and all the muscle contractions wherever we need calcium. If you're taking calcium from the, the soil, that calcium cannot be used by us. It is absorbed and it's stored in the tissues. And we will end up with things like cataracts, frozen shoulder, hip replacements, knee replacements. Um, when you're talking about when you go to things like the, the golds and, and the, the silvers and stuff that people consume, what is, what is that? Okay, I'll tell you right now. Those are almost minerals. So just let me finish this thingy. Okay, we've got to know that the plant is our food <coughs> chain. Okay, so we're getting our food from the plants. Okay. How is it, uh, in this calcium, what makes the calcium different in the, in the plant than in the soil? Okay, the what is the makeup of it? The molecule is altered in a readily available and usable form for us. I'll show you. I'll show you on the paper. Yeah, the molecule, the molecular structure. It's not just calcium glutamate or calcium. It's not dolomite. That is for plants, and even the coral from the the calcium from the coral. And I can tell you now, I'm a candidate. I was buying uh, coral calcium, that wonderful white powder, and I thought I was doing the best thing. And then I went and had a hair mineral analysis done, and I actually had toxic levels of calcium in my tissues. So I can tell you. Jay, yeah. It can be incredibly dangerous as well with pregnant women and there have been babies born completely calcified at birth with um, thickened joints and all sorts of things. So it's absolutely mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah. Is that, so is that from, from too much calcium? Yes. Yeah, from, 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 from. And there's a lemon citrate cleanse, which if you want it, let me know because that will, uh, you know what, it, it calcifies the pineal gland. Who wants that? We don't. We want, to, we want to get to a high frequency thingy. So um, it is misinformation. All right. So having said all of that, then we understand the food chain thing. And then, yeah, to look at nutrient dense, regenerative, and intelligent food. And these foods and these plants are intelligent. I think you will allow the converted. So we know about that. Versus the poor nutrition, which is really um, low vibrational stuff. And the more low vibrational food you eat, the more you're going to stay down there. And the more you're going to have those thoughts, and the more you're going to be affected by other people around you who have those thoughts, and the more people like that you're going to attract. And then you're going to get the consciousness. The disease profiles. Um, and the more your blood is going to not be optimum. So... As a pharmacist, this is actually down my alley because everything's about acids and bases <laughs> and, the, and the blood pH needs to be balanced. It needs to be 7.4. And if you take one thing out of this today, apart from the hormone thing, we need to understand this. So we need to do our level best to make that blood as alkaline as possible. I'm making sense. Because if it's not um, alkaline, it, it pulls out of the tissues and the bones, the calcium, magnesium, potassium, all the positive ions to get it back up to... 7.4, because it normally goes acidic. So the fizzy drinks and the McDonald's and the, the blah, blah, make us acidic. And then the body goes out of balance, and then what happens is they are, they're called proteins, little micro enzyme things, which alter and become pathogenic in our blood. That's how we get sick. So we need to do our level best to keep that uh, blood balanced. Um, uh, I think I read the other day that uh, cancer actually cannot survive in a, an alkaline environment. So, um, and it will actually only take off and grow if, if you're consistently in a state of acidosis. Yeah, and it's, thanks Penny, and it's created by Candida. When they break open or, or cut open any of those tumors, there's Candida sitting in there. And candida loves an acid environment, and it loves sugar, and it starts driving us. So we, don't, we want to be in the driving seat. We don't want um, something else, a, a parasite or a fungus or a bacteria driving us. Okay. So, as I've said to you, we must always know this, because um, everything falls back to this. We need exercise. 
Sunlight's essential for hormones because the light enters our eyes, goes to the pituitary and pineal glands, and um, balances the hormones. Now, through the hypothalamus. Do never mind. The hormones tell our cells what to do. They instruct our cells what to do. They are that important. And just by the 30 minutes in the sun without sunglasses, with as much skin exposed, apart from the nutrient value and everything for the purposes of today, that's enough sunlight to, to set our hormones. So who does 30 minutes a day in the sun? Okay, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this is another thing, I mean, just on the side. Um, this one particular client that comes to mind as well, the one that never touched the soil and everything. So it was a 500 um, square meter vegetable garden in Kalami. So there she is, she's now touching the soil and her feet are getting sand and everything and the cows are mooing because it's, it's Kalami and stuff. And then I went home. And the next morning, it was so gratifying because she said to me, Jane, you can't believe the sleep that I had. I've never slept like that. So, you know, that was really great because she was in the sun. And... All right. And then obviously sleep is important. And um, getting back to that framework of mine, that's where the serotonin, melatonin, cortisol, and stress comes in. Though the levels are out and we'll go there, we're going to have sleep problems. So, part of the, the sleep thingy is food. The other one is things like electrical lights and screens. Phones, TVs, and all the rest of it. Melatonin comes in at 10 o'clock at night. It swaps over from serotonin. If you're not, the lights aren't off, and I mean, okay, fine. I'm just telling you the physiology behind it. That's when melatonin comes. If you go to bed at 12 and you've been on the screen all the time, I can tell you you're not going to have proper REM sleep. Your nervous system is not going to be rejuvenated and you will be stressed and when you're stressed and, you, and all of that that's when you catch it that's when somebody will catch you in the next day on some level or something will happen or because you're just not grounded and you're not centered all right so relaxation is very important and it depends on you and then obviously creativity okay to get the hormones right i'm giving you the background and then we're going to go through that framework doesn't matter if it's thyroid, ovarian cysts, um, testosterone, hmm? menopause, to, uh, teenage acne, um, skin outbursts in your in your thirties. We need to detoxify, and this is very important in terms of today because we're breathing it, we're eating it, we're drinking all the heavy metals and the. Um, Xenoestrogen. So the first thing we do is a liver detox, and there are lots and lots of things on the market, very safe. Um, milk thistle and garlic is a wonderful one. They've just made milk thistle schedule three. But I have seeds, so if anybody wants to grow this plant, it is absolutely beautiful. It's a, it's a bush this big, it gets a beautiful purple thistle like an artichoke. And the leaves are like, like a snake skin, they're beautiful. Um, so if anyone wants seeds, I have. Okay, so and it, that's really great for a liver, a liver cleanse. And you need to do about 30 days. And then we uh, get rid of heavy metals. What are heavy metals? Mercury. Mercury. Hmm? Lead, mercury, chlorine, bromine, fluoride. Zinc. Too much zinc. We also need zinc, but yeah. Okay, so those are the heavy metals, and what they do is they like to lodge and bind our receptor sites, live in our liver and in various other places. They make us fat, and they make us depressed and moody, and they make us acidic. Amalgam fillings, things like that as well. So we need to get rid of the heavy metals. It's actually very easy, and there's lots of uh, products on the market. And I, I work at Walida Pharmacies. I have a room there. You can come have a look. We can go through the whole pharmacy. I can show you all the things. Uh, so I'm not a whole bent on, on a specific thing or whatever. Um, but the thing is to get them out. So we've got to break those bonds. Something like chlorella is one of the best things to break those the bonds between the heavy metal and our body. And then you follow it with iodine. Um, we do we do our shots in the mornings of the Z contain chlorella. It does have chlor chlorella in it. Uh, it does have chlorophyll in it. Chlorella is an algae. Yeah. 
So the, the three green algae are spirulina, chlorella, and blue-green algae. These examples over there. But the chlorella one is the one that really splits it off. There's also cilantro oil, um, coriander oil. And you can use that as well. We, we do coriander shots. If you've had the, yes. the, the metal taken out of the fillings, then they say you should take shot. coriander shots. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. When you say a shot, you want to just... You actually you juice the coriander. You take it like a shot. The same as oh, the oh, you mean like juice. a... Oh, so yeah. you juice it. Okay, oh, yeah. wonderful. Okay, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. But then you've got to grow your own. And this is essential with cori uh, coriander. Does everyone know what I mean, coriander? Um, there's other names for it. Um, because it's, it's so strong with um, the heavy metal story, if you go and buy it and it's been grown in soil where there are heavy metals, it contains heavy metals. So the best thing ever is to get a pot and just grow your own. Because otherwise, you're going to be ingesting those heavy metals or something. Okay, so you understand the, th the theory there? It's chlorella and iodine. Iodine is in the same periodic table as fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and everything. It goes in and it binds it for you. I've used zeolite. Zeolite's wonderful. Zeolite will carry it out for you. So it will is, scavenge it. Is it as good as? Zeolite, okay, is not absorbed. Yes. Okay, so it will take out in the intestine. Right. what it can. Uh, effective microorganisms will scavenge and take out also in the intestine. These are beneficial bacteria, fungi and yeasts. It will also scavenge. The chlorella goes into the tissue. So the zeolite goes into the tissue? No, it can't. So Just remember so what I said. So you need to use both, really? You've got to use the, the zeolite or carbon or something like that. Or a bl or, yeah. Can you, can you use them at the same time? Or you have like yeah, time? in the morning. 30 minutes between the two. Have a glass, have a litre of water in the morning with um, juice of one lemon and then these two. But the zeolite and the... the zeolite in as well. Together, the Zeolite's inert. It's an absolutely wonderful substance. It's paramagnetic. You link directly with the cosmos because it's a, it's a honey shape. It's a hexagon and it's beautiful. You have it in you every day. It's just amazing. I actually put some in, 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 in a bath sometimes and soak for like a good hot bath. Fantastic. For an hour. Right? And that'll extract heavy metals out of your. Mm. Out of your perfect. Thanks. Great. Hi, Jan. What is the zeolite? Volcanic rock dust. It's the stuff we put in the soil for the plants to absorb so that we can eat it. So it's in the right form for us to eat the minerals. It's, it's mineral dense from the, from the volcanoes. You know how everything grows so beautifully. I just wanted to ask because uh, obviously what we talk about is we talk about consuming things, um, but uh, like there's two stones, uh, stone site and naturalite are zeolites as well, and when you wear something like that, the vibration of that also moves around. Absolutely. So is what, what in your opinion is the difference between having something of that or like in your presence versus actually consuming something like that? Just do it all and bath in it. <laughs> okay. So, that's the heavy metal story, we've got to get rid of that. Clean the liver, get rid of the heavy metals, we will lose weight. Green juices are wonderful also, and because the, the chlorophyll also cleans you. And then we get rid of xenoestrogens. Okay, so what are xenoestrogens? So, I just have a question about the name is it the same as fullest mm. no. It comes from the volcano, it's mined in the Drakensberg. Okay, so what are xenoestrogens? The plastic derivatives that we touch all day long. So the pen, if I had to write a list from, from when I wake up in the morning, by the time I've touched the toothbrush, the toothpaste, the, the cream, bottle of the cream, the milk bottle, the whatever we're touching, or every time we touch plastic, there's an estrogen-like compound that mimics, obviously mimics estrogen. So what happens is we all become estrogen dominant. The progesterone is sitting down here and the testosterone is sitting down here. And that's disastrous for our health, which we'll see in a moment. So we've got to try and not touch plastic as far as possible. And be very mindful of these plastics. They're even in our bread. There's plastic in our bread even. Never mind the covering of the bread, it's even in the bread. And um, <clears throat> again, they cause weight gain, acidity, and mess up our hormones too terribly. So we want to get rid of them. So who knows how to get rid of xenoestrogens? 
aromatase inhibitor and I'll show you some more just now. So it's really simple. So we started with our hormone thing. We don't even care yet about a blood test or anything because until you've done this, you're not going to get the right information. Okay. And these things are like um, 30 days each. You can, if you're hardcore, then you do the whole lot. You can, because this is all food. Nothing here is dangerous. Nothing is going to interact. It's natural and it's food. You will have three days of die off and feeling rotten. But I mean, just embrace that because you know you, you're getting rid of it. You must take those your light um, to pull it out, definitely. You must get it out as soon as possible and drink your water. There's a few times you've said my life's working, so... I think some of us are clearly attracted more to the heavy metals and the stuff. And why does it make the game work? Because it's a toxin, and in order for the body to deal with the toxins, it forms a little fat cell around it, and it just gets stored. And the, and the, and the, the fatter you get, the more you store. Is that mostly why people pick up weight? Yeah, it? one of the yes, and then it knocks your hormones out. You see. Oh. So we try, and my, what my research and, and courses have shown me is to let's cleanse, and then we start off with nutrition. So we detoxify and we start then nutrifying ourselves with the food that's going to help us on the hormonal path. Even eight-year-olds are, are hormone in, imbalances. All their toys are, to, are, are plastic, their foods in plastic things, so no. all right. Coconut is the most wonderful thing. The fresh green ones are the best in terms of um, the, that pregnenolone precursor. Here's a bottle of pregnenolone. You can also come and have a look at it at the, at the end. Um, I wonder if it's got a price on it. Probably about 200 grand. Um, well, I, it's not mine. This is not mine. <laughs> The mana are all in amber glass, plant cellulose capsules, blah, blah. <laughs> and just so you know, also for fertility, um, those fresh green coconuts, that, that coconut water and, and that, that uh, gelatinous flesh, before it's got hard, really, really boost hormones, hormone levels. <coughs> fertility is a big problem with stress. It's cortisol, which is, affects our hormones. It's, it's um, blood glucose, which is bordering on the diabetic thing. Well, most of us are pre-diabetic because we eat so much sugar. It's sugar is hidden in everything. And then it could be a physical um, physical problem, which you'll pick up in a scan. So that's, a problem, that's with fertility. Was there a question? Yes, thank you. Um, I used to take testosterone injections when I did bodybuilding. And um, afterwards, my testosterone levels just keep on going down and I, I recently about a year ago stopped that. Um, what can I do to raise my natural testosterone levels again? There is um, the tribulus here, which is a plant, and it's for men and women. Women also need testosterone and so you could come have a look at this right. afterwards. It gently raises it. Mm -hmm. But I would I would go the coconut root as well and there's some other plants. There's maca powder and some other supporting plants that do that. So, um, just incidentally then, seeing that you've raised this, let's just talk about andropause versus men and, and menopause. Take a break for a moment. Right, so andropause is what men go through. There's a lot more written about menopause and andropause. Okay? Uh, possibly because it's easier to quantify in terms of a 28-day cycle and all the rest of it, but everybody goes through a 28-day cycle because we all are 80% water, so we're all affected by the moon and blah, blah. 
So actually from the age of 30, men start losing a percentage of testosterone every year. It's more gradual in onset. So suddenly, um, you're, you're, are you making me laugh, man? <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, um, you will find that you're weak or you're fatigued or getting slightly depressed. or I mean, many parents even have hot, hot flushes as well. So it will suddenly dawn on you. It's not quite as marked as in, as, as in females. It will suddenly dawn, dawn on you that you're not quite who you were. Kind of thing. But it happens from the age of 30. You lose testosterone and, and that other thing called DHEA, which where, where the blue-green algae comes in. So for men, blue-green algae and this tribulus are excellent in a combination, and it comes straight off pregnant alone. So we go back to that. Um, let me just quickly go back there. Sorry. So here, these are the two mainly that um, will affect <coughs> men. And it's a blue green algae contains DHA, which is an omega, and it supports that beautifully. And also brain consciousness and um, bone marrow uh, stem cell production, immunity, it's amazing food, but we haven't got time for that today. All right. So that's where, that's what, where that... What's the advantages for coconut with people that's already, uh, with high blood sugar levels, already been labeled uh, type 1 or type 2 di diabetes? Well, uh, it's not a very sweet um, fruit or nut. So if you took that with soaked seeds or in a green juice, you're going to have a good, a, 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 quite a smooth glycemic index. And then menopause also to digress. Now, in the in the past, in ancient ancient traditions, people actually embraced um, part the, part the various pathways and times that we move through our life. So puberty was uh, celebrated, childbirth is celebrated, menopause was celebrated, and so on. And the wisdom of the elders and all the rest of it. Whereas today, because of marketing and how everything is and everything, it's just the most dreadful thing to be in menopause and nobody wants that and who wants to be moody and who wants to be... And in fact, actually, I brought two books here because if one actually does look at the, at the research, um, well, first of all, this one by Christine Northrup and anybody who, who wants to have an insight on menopause, it's an amazing book. And... What is she is really is saying is that it's a it's a it's a time in a woman's life when actually she's done with the reproduction. It is a chemical, physical chemical change, and that nurturing, home building, whatever, whatever, actually falls away. And if she is um, awake and conscious, she will take her destiny then and do what she needs to do, do, do her soul work. And apparently, that force of energy is one of the strongest forces of energy on, 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 the, on the planet. So um, again, it depends. If you're not conscious and you're not awake, you can then end up, and, and, and yes, people come and see me, and the client will be 65, 70. All she's done since the age of, since she's had her children is look after her husband. And she's depressed and she's not, and things aren't well with her. So we can't miss this opportunity um, as women to actually embrace what we were here for because now's the time. You can do it, yes, alongside of the living, <coughs> but now's really the time because you have the chemicals to support you. Do you suggest that women should have raised their kids before they hit menopause? Because it sounds like after menopause they won't be as interested in looking after them. Or their husband. <laughs> no, but seriously, if the husband carries on expecting them to be the, the nurturing mothers, um, and that's why you'll find at 47, 48, 49, that's quite a critical time. So am I, am I saying that? I can't, because you know what? That's interfering with what is. I'm not, I'm not holding you to you make the decision. I mean, you, you, it's a great question. 
But I think you know the answers. Yeah. Actually, we should be having our children in our teens. I mean, if a man's testosterone is reducing from the age of 30, we should be having our children when we, you know... Yeah, yeah. Children in Egyptians said that. I'm not joking. So thanks for your question. I'm so relieved that you're saying this because it's exactly what my mom was going through. She's um, lost interest in being motherly towards me. Um, but since menopause, she starts her successful business, so and she's living a dream now, which is yeah. So I guess it's amazing. Which we all have to do, and if we're not actually doing our soul work and our calling, I could tell you now we're going to be a mess. Um, um, blood acidity, hormones, stress hormones, um, weight, all the, all the various symptoms. People come to me because they're ill, and it just depends on your weak area. So it could be osteoporosis, it could be um, candida, it could be cancer, it could be arthritis. Or, you know, depends where your weak, weak area is, but actually, unless we're doing what we need to do, and I must just say, and it's digressing a little bit, but living in our truth, we're going to keep getting sick. It's just one of those things, doesn't matter how much green juice you drink. No. I wanted to ask, the, the, what, if, what if you had somebody that was the complete opposite of the, the healthy system that you're talking about, but they still don't get sick? How do you know? Like well, I, I no, you see, sick. I'll tell you what, these various... <laughs> But, but, but you see, nutrition is one aspect. Maybe on all those others, you're actually doing your soul work and you're in, in, in with nice brains so and you you're in with music. Yeah, depends where you connect it. But yeah. can I just say something about disease? Disease starts with a cough or a sniff. And we cough and we sniff and we cough and we sniff and we ignore it. And then it says, okay, fine, I've told you, I can't talk to you, but I've told you that you're allergic to something, let's say. That's what's making you sniff and cough and all this. So fine, I will then just go somewhere else. And then you will get secondary, a secondary illness. And then it will go tertiary, and then you'll start getting arthritis. Or, or, yeah, or blocked arteries, or, or whatever. And then you will go into candida. So don't just think, and I'm, I'm not using you as an no, example no, no, at all. I'm, I'm being patient and waiting for, 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 the, for it to manifest. In my garbage. Because <laughs> I generally eat rubbish. I eat rubbish. I'm, I'm terrible. I don't exercise anymore. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. I, but I, just, I still don't get sick. I haven't been sick even in the flu for six years now. So That's amazing. Because most people do detox at the equinox and at the um, change of season. We actually do. And coming up now, 21st of March, you will see. You will see if you're conscious, you will want to fast. You will want to cleanse. Because are we wired to do that? And then, and then, as I say, some people get sick as a forced detox, or, or they fast, or they, or they don't get sick. Sorry, Jane. Can I just ask, what, what about libido in terms of um, people going through change of life? Yeah. So if the the hormone levels are too low, then you're going to not live your life to the fullest. Exactly. So if we go now more to progesterone, and that woman needs progesterone, and men need testosterone. But you need an adequate estrogen level as well, and you can't also have the bad estrogens. Mm. Okay, so um, so this is more then again the one would move more on that level, and that's a, there's a tree called taste berry, which is quite appropriately kind of named probably, <laughs> and um, that one will boost progesterone levels. So when you also when you're looking at uh, menopause, you've got to look at the estrogen level too. Both, both, in men and women. And there's three estrogen levels there. So if you go and have them tested, and this is actually quite interesting because you get this form, you need to request all three. The estrogen 2 is the good one. Black cohosh is a herb. Might I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. And that's the one you want when you're an older woman. That one needs to be definitely on a, on a high level. If that one's low and the other two are high, then um, there, yeah, it's cause for concern. Okay, so let's just move on a little bit here. Are you all with me? Yeah. Okay, this is answering your question at the back. These are natural hormone builders. Mm. And yeah, bee pollen, it's there. 
raw cacao, it's raw cacao, okay, it's not the sort of baking cocoa, it's the hot chocolate, because that's heated and it's full of rancid fats and things like that that are not going to work with us. Now, incidentally, that olive oil needs to be cold pressed, because heated fat is a trans fat which we, the body can't deal with, the enzyme is dead, so we can't digest it, so it gets stored. So, Nothing, doesn't need anything. Cold pressed. <coughs> How hot is heated? Over 47 degrees. If you have to, have to, have to fry, use coconut oil. It goes into the transform at about 170 degrees. Just, I didn't say that, but if you have to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, look, you know what, you guys? I mean, ignorant, ignorance is one thing, but knowing something and not doing anything about it, so I'm sorry about it tonight. <laughs> okay. Alright, and then you can go down that list. This is a, a hormone building tea which I've concocted. It's got red clover and valerian and a whole lot of things. Penny's got some very nice herbal teas there as well. Um, and this definitely works because um, people told me things have happened. So. This will definitely um, work hormones. There's a whole list at the back. Uh, men and women, no problem. Maca, who's heard of maca? Maca powder. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's an adaptogen, which means it's a plant that lives in really extreme conditions. Either really the desert and drought, or this one at the top of the Andes, over 2,000 feet above sea level. Um, but one of the only plants that exists there. It looks like a radish, it's yellow. It smells divine, if, I suppose if you need it. <laughs> if you don't need it, you might not like it. I like it. It goes really well in smoothies, in chocolates, over, over um, soaked seeds and things. It's a great hormone uh, promoter, and all of them. It makes whatever you're using quite bulky though, because it's like a bit of a flower. So if you want a thin hemp milk or something, you won't put it yeah, in. I put it in my shape this morning and then I left it for 15 minutes and I had sludge. <laughs> well, it depends how much you use. Yeah. And then I went just caution with uh, children, you know, adolescents and young children, you wouldn't put too much there. Um, no problem. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> Job. Okay, so that's a good one. And then <coughs> things like fennel tea. Oats is good, raw rolled oats and things. Raw butter, incidentally, especially spring butter. If you can get organic with the cows that drunk spring water and things like that. Otherwise, remember, the cow's food and the chicken's food and all the rest of it, if they've ingested heavy metals and the, the xenoestrogens in their food, we will get it. So the higher up the food chain you go, plants will have the least, animals will have more concentrated because they will even have got it from the plants as well. So if you can get raw butter. Rishi mushroom, we've got it over there. Natural hormone builder. Sweet potato, wonderful. It's the wild yam family. And pine pollen. So one of them I still need to get. Okay, so if you want to include those in your Cashew nuts also, they promote progesterone. Um, okay, how are we doing for time? Please? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Oh, have I? Okay, perfect. Right. I don't want to rush it because I want to just keep everyone with me. Here are what we call hormone helpers. Now, Ashwagandha Saviri Jin Sang, I posted something this morning on the intelligence of plants and the fact that the plant's brain is in the roots, it's opposite to us. So their brain is in the roots and it's in the soil. Plant roots feed our brain. They have to give us neurotransmitters and hormones and things like that. They work with our hypothalamus and all the brain areas. Ashwagandha is Indian ginseng, Siberian ginseng, all the ginsengs. They definitely help lower stress and build um, beneficial estrogens. So there's a, an adaptogen mix over there as well. So I urge you to go and have a look. There's lots of products on the market. It's just, those are pure. There's no fillers. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. So do you have a list of things that you recommend that we should take? Because there's millions of these things on the market. Yeah. Literally. I do think, I do. I, I would go for medicinal mushroom mix. I would go for blue green algae. Yeah, but if you've got a list of something, we can just go online or something. Just okay, yeah. 
I'll go definitely. I would have some adaptogenic herbs. I would have some of these ginseng herbs. I would definitely go for the medicinal mushrooms. These are all intelligent, high vibrational, high frequency things that are all complete proteins. So they feed our neurotransmitters and they feed our immune system. I mean, lion's mane is a mushroom, is, encourages brain cell production. It's so amazing. ADD, ADD children and adults, blue green algae and lion's mane mushroom and a bit of uh, ginseng. Perfect. You don't need anything else. Hmm? No. Okay, so um, here's now another list. Don't quay is a, is a herb. You can get it as a tea. Okay, promotes uh, goji berries. It's another adaptogen, grows in near with cactuses in the desert in China and so on. Complete protein hormone helper. Ganostema tea, also from the east. Boti is another adaptogen like ashwagandha and ginseng. Kelp from the sea. Tea which is very good at uh, promoting estrogen. Raspberry leaf tea. Have you got some of that? No, you've got the red clover. Red clover sitting there at Penny's table. Um, sage is wonderful. Saw palmetto for men, that's for enlarged prostate. And, and that's, that works. Tulsi is a herb heavenly basil for women. And your Hindi for men. I haven't really seen that in South Africa. <coughs> Jane, the problem with your Hindi is that it's being well harvested to absolute death. So there is a caution on that and to make sure that whatever you're purchasing is being um, ethically harvested. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Penny. Okay, so now we look at some hormone promoters. Now we've got to look at the antioxidants. But the vitamins are the antioxidants. First of all, vitamin D3, if you do have your blood assessed, your hormone levels assessed, you need to ask also request D3 if it's not on the form. It's an integral part of the five hormones really that I look at. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, D3, and thyroid. You've got to do those three. They're all interlinked. Um, and that's an important one because it gives you clues to east of your estrogen and cortisol levels. D3 strange in a country like South Africa, you know, with all our sun and everything that we actually, but we are, we're all in offices and in our cars and vitamin A is essential, that's your carotenoids, all your carrots and your orangey, yellowy fruits. Vitamin E, <coughs> normalizer estrogen and progesterone. Okay, also antioxidant. Vitamin C and MSN incidentally will produce DHEA as well. And research is showing the anti, what do you it, it the reduces bad it? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, it will get rid of the bad ones. Oh, okay, so MSM, that's an organic sulfur. And by the way, that will clean your pineal gland of the calcium. So you put that in your in your water in the morning, MSM. You can go up to a tablespoon um, a day. Start with a teaspoon and go up to a tablespoon. It's relatively inexpensive. Wonderful, with the lemon juice. Calcium citrate, you do that for three months. Decalcify your body. And then even sea salt, that's the pure sea salt. That's not just sodium chloride, it's the full with all the minerals. Yeah? I take MSM, I become nauseous. Is it because it's detoxing? Maybe. How much do you take? Uh, I take a capsule form. How many? I'm doing two. I don't know how much in the capsule. Just persevere. Just persevere. Yeah. Two capsules in the morning. Just persevere. Yeah. Get rid of it. That sulfur is essential for us. Do I need to break it? I give it a C. Right, yeah, vitamin C is very good. It's a, it enhances and potentiates a lot of... Um, a lot of things. Medicinal mushrooms will potentiate them as well. So. Just persevere, it's not, it's not because you're intolerant or it's toxic. I doubt that very athletes, anyone's an athlete for, for performance and for recovery. It cleans out all the lactic acid and everything and it improves performance. It's amazing. No, then you're going to get a, a teaspoon and it tastes... In a powder maybe. Yeah. I think I'll stick to ketchup. No, it's really, it's, yeah, it's really yuck. It's not bitter, it's not salty, it's something else. Okay? 8 o'clock, okay? So, yeah. Sorry? Sorry? Okay. Um, I noticed you said vitamin D3 is anti estrogen and cortisol, but I had a general failure with very low cortisol in my body, and they gave me 50 
20,000 units of vitamin D3. Doesn't that lower my cortisol even more? How's it going to normalize it? Your cortisol was already low. Yes, I'm choking the cortisol. It was practically nothing in the body. And they called it adrenal failure. So they gave me very... Because, I mean, apparently vitamin D3 is supposed to take about 2,000 units. But I'm in 50,000 units. That's how I'm hectic. What I'm finding is that I'm just, I'm just the spiraling non-stop. She betcha. Does that sound normal? Well, let's talk about it afterwards. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I read somewhere that uh, um, pine needles have sulfur, organic sulfur in it. Is that the no, same no, as MSM? No, I think so. And it's got vitamin C. In so fact, it does come from the pine. Okay. It's organic. You make tea from it. It does come from the pine. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So progesterone, I think we know. The one, two, if you've got low levels, Look, your options are hormonal replacement. One down from that is bioidentical hormonal replacement, which is made from plants. In other words, it wouldn't be a pig hormone or a cow hormone or whatever. And then one down from that would be natural supplementation. What I always look at is the degree of, of out of balance. So if someone is really, really estrogen deficient or really, really estrogen um, dominant. Sometimes for a month or two, you might want to kickstart because if the levels are left, that's when os uh, um, osteoporosis and post uh, uh, ovarian cysts and uh, prostate cancer set in. So you don't want to leave it. So sometimes I do look at it and I look at a bioidentical hormone replacement which is compounded here in South Africa. I know the pharmacist available at Walida for a month or two. Just to get those levels up to a, a nice therapeutic level at least. And then at the same time we, we're supplementing with the, with the herbs. So you need to be responsible. I get to find us all this knowledge. How do you know what level you want? Like what's the measuring tool that we use? So you would go and get a, lab, a blood test, yeah. and the cortisol generally is saliva. You need to do four of them: morning, mid, uh, early morning, mid morning, afternoon, and evening. So this getting covered by medical aid. No. Really? Mm. Okay. So, um, ladies who don't feel the feminine aspect, that are could be they will be estrogen dominant, and that means. Um, male characteristics, skin breakouts, hair on the chin. Hmm? Hair on the chin. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's a wonderful thing and I actually think nearly everybody needs to be on this. Even the young children, even my daughter when she was in adolescence and ever need this because we are so estrogen dominant because of all the plastics. The soya soya uh fata estrogens. Okay, but so not every day. Not every day. It depends on your blood group. Ace can eat a lot more. Which I just um I it's found generally that soya GMO, is, hey? The soya we process eat is processed. It's generally generally Well fries is no longer GMO, but it, it's very processed, no matter where you totally get it from. Totally Whereas <laughs> the soya that you get in a supplement like this is a, is an extract from the food. If you get it in the, um, like the bioidentical. Okay. Yeah, but even then, I would go for a progesterone that's made from <coughs> wild yam because yes. I, I just think there's too much sensitivity around the soya. Yeah. Too much sensitivity around the soya. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, and my daughter can't eat soya at And sometimes, <coughs> inadvertently, we'll eat something else that somebody's prepared and it has soya in, and that's if we doubled over in pain for three days. Yeah. Contains all those fatty nutrients. So, um, rather go for the wild yam. There's a nice cream called Her Balance. By the way, most of these have to be, um, no, not most of these. The progesterone cream will have to be recommended by a doctor or a homeopath or something. Okay, they are scheduled, all of these. I work at the Integrative, Advanced Integrative Medical Center in Houghton, and that's a good one. Good place to go and get a blood test. There. Even there's a lab right there as well. Okay, so that's the female one, then let's go in. Okay, that's what it looks like. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful plant. For new birds? Yes, yes. For young girls, premenstrual symptoms, young 
and the young ladies safe. Okay, then we look at the blue-green algae, the DHEA. Now we're getting back to our framework. So we've got pregnenolone, we've got progesterone, and now we're going the DHEA down the line. Oh, sorry. There. So we've done progesterone. Now we're coming down here. And that is the precursor for testosterone and estrogen. We have to have it. You can get it in blue-green algae. You can get it from MSM and vitamin C. So if you get a tablet called D well, DHEA prescribed to you, is it a chemical compound? It's not something that you... They might have got it out of the algae. Well, the one that I, I got it from a leader. Just have a look and see. Okay. It's useful to do that. Always. Check your, <laughs> check your labels. Always. Are there no other uh, plant supplements that we can take? Because, uh, you know, if you want to just grow it in your garden and eat no. it, because... Not that I know. Okay, sorry. Excuse me. Persilane weed. Weed. Do you know what persilane is? Yes. Okay, yes. just start cultivating it. That is the plant... The, the, thank you. That is the land plant with the highest amount of DHA in it. Both well, amigas. Would the same? Because it's family of Would it have the same? Possibly. Response? Will you let us know? It's a good chance. Okay, that purslane. Go and Google it. I didn't get a picture of it. Thank you so much. In your juice, in your salad. It's slightly bitter. It's, it's slightly mucusy as well. It's not the same in spectrum. It's different completely. It's similar to Oh, is it? Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, just stop pulling it out and start growing it. Um, it's amazing for the mind, for the brain and for the hormones. Okay. Oh, sorry. So then the testosterone, I've told you, it's the tribulus plant. And there'll, there'll, there'll be a picture of it. I'll go there now and then we'll just go. Okay, that's the algae. That's how it grows there. Another nice thing about... Um, the HEA is that um, yeah, it intensifies your neurotransmitters. It's wonderful for consciousness and brain only. That's why I say blue bean algae and lion's mane for consciousness and a bit of ginseng. I'm telling you, you will, you will be able to concentrate. So it's wonderful. It's got PEA, which is um, really good for concentration and mood, and it's good for men uh, obviously for uh, menopause and all that kind of thing. Then we've got the tribulus, which is the testosterone one. Very pretty cute little plant. Saw palmetto. That's that fur. You see it growing all over. In large prostate. And then this is the black cohosh, which promotes the good estrogen. Lovely plant also. Beautiful. I mean, I, I don't know, but there's an infinity. They're beautiful. Okay, so let me just go back here a second. Okay, so the black, black cohosh promotes good estrogen. And some people are deficient in that and high in the other ones. That's dangerous. Because the high in the other ones are the, are the cancer forming ones. Okay. Okay, we nearly, there's benefits of estrogen. We do need it. We haven't got enough. There's, la, there's alarm bells because the bone densities and the heart, multiple sclerosis, breast cancers, endometriosis. Hot flushes, dryness, things like that. Okay. Okay, this gets back to our xenoestrogen cleanse, where we use broccoli and the olive oil. The olive oil binds the site. These things also do. And they block xenoestrogens from, from binding. So we need to have at least a tablespoon of olive oil a day. And some of these things, they're all aromatase inhibitors. They block xenoestrogens for me. Okay. Right, so now we're going to move on to, I'm just going to go back again now, because this is one that always throws a spanner in the works. Because of our lifestyle and how we look, we generally all of the time this cortisol and adrenaline. Adrenaline, and then we start going up to the neurotransmitter area here and start affecting ourselves here. So the more stressed we are, the more progesterone we're using, which we don't want that because then that dips even further and even more estrogen dominance. 
and it also sucks up our dopamine, which we don't want, because that's our feel good, get up and do things, our motivation, get rid of the to-do list. So we don't want that either. So that cortisol is a problem one. Um, magnolia bark is the herb, the plant herb, that will balance that for us. You know if you've got high cortisol because you'll be stressed, you'll be sweating, and you will have sleep problems. Because it works with the melatonin, and if you haven't gone to sleep properly and right and then all of that, um, it stops the melatonin getting secreted at night time. So cortisol is a problem. It's a dangerous um, hormone. So if your progesterone levels are normal, that's good. Because at least you can produce some. We need cortisol. We can't not have any. Yeah. So that's good. But we don't want it to be too much in our blood. So cortisol, you'll have generally, if you can have three, uh, four saliva readings, early in the morning, mid-morning, mid-afternoon, and in the evening, then you can see when you, where you're out, if you are out. And if, you, if you're too hot, night, and, and, and so on, you're not going to sleep. And not a chance. You're going to wake up in that early morning and. Okay. Yeah, this borage effect cortisol. You can look it up. Does uh, what what level of effect does these do these chemicals have on them, uh, the lucidity of your dreams and so on? Because we've got all of these dreaming plants and so on, but what do, do the dreaming plants affect our cortisol levels and the serotonin and the melatonin? Very very good so? question. Possibly yes. <laughs> Because we don't need to be taking uh, in dream enhancing plants if our chemicals are doing the right thing. Yeah. But you could do it if you wanted to specifically, you know, have, uh, for a reason. If you wanted but to. But surely if our machine was optimum, uh, like running You would dream. Thing, you would dream you know. normally. If it's not optimum and the melatonin is not coming and you're not having REM sleep. Okay. And then it's a vicious cycle because then the stress hormones become even more, you get even more stress, so you've got even more adrenaline, even more cortisol, you start getting adrenal fatigue near the kidneys, and you know, it's a, that, that down spiral, and then uh, MS sets in, because we the virus sets in, and all the, all the lovely complications set in. So cortisol is something we really got to watch. Um, are you all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So does the magnolia bark raise or lower? Lower. How do you ingest the bark? Ground up the bark. They ground up the bark. Can you do it yourself? Hmm. Absolutely. Any magnolia. Okay, so then just to wrap up, I've, I've, I've put these two in here because they are so much um, on that pathway. <coughs> have I helped you? Is this helping you, Dean? Must have helped you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, these are dotted lines, eh? These two. Those are also, and these are actually should be more dotted lines. Mm -hmm. So now we're sitting up here with the with the neurotransmitters. They also they also um, hormonal in nature. They are also um, affected by sunlight, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, pineal gland, and so on and so forth. And they are also our feel good. So just if you want to know a little bit about all of this, they're also directly affected by, um, mainly by the food we eat. So um, let's just have a look here. Okay, here's, there's two pathways. Without <coughs> like overload you. But taurine is an amino acid. So proteins feed this pathway. They also feed the serotonin pathway. Those are the two neurotransmitters, serotonin and, and dopamine. Dopamine will go into noradrenaline and adrenaline. We need it. We are the only species that stand up. If we haven't got adrenaline, we can't stand up. So all of these we need, but can't be too much. So vitamins, the B vitamins are essential for the neurotransmitters. How, what is a good source for me to take in B, vitamin B? Because um, I don't eat meat at all, but we've uh, started with the wheatgrass now, and I've read that the wheatgrass does help with the vitamin B. Is that so? Is it if I drink wheat grass every day, will it stabilize? Vitamin B and vitamin C are water soluble. So what you haven't used that day, you eliminate. 
and it's, it's hard to get them in. So one of the supplements I would suggest, because of us, we're not living in the forest, is a, is a good multi-mega vitamin B. That Solal one is excellent. It's mega absorb vitamin B with B12. So that's good. Or you can also have a look at um, the greens. Yeah. The greens are also good. Just another quick question about uh, probiotics. Where does this come in? Okay, thank you. So we're getting there when we oh, talk okay. about serotonin. Okay. Because there's more serotonin secreted here than here. So just hold on, okay. this is the next slide. <laughs> okay, so these are the things that will boost, um, will boost dopamine. The algae is again, so that's a spelling mistake. I did actually correct it. That's weird. Okay. Um, fish, eggs, milk, beans, spinach, almonds, bananas. Pumpkin seeds, unbelievable. Have them permanent in your car as a snack. Unbelievable. Sesame seeds and brown rice, perfect food for dopamine. Dopamine is our get up and go. I have a product there called Mukuna. Who's, held a, who's heard of Mukuna? It's a bean. Completely natural, completely everything. It grows with the cacao uh, plant in the, sorry, in the drain forests. And that product um, is, is old dopamine. It stopped people with shaking Parkinsonisms and things like that within half an hour. So, uh, dopamine, yeah, Parkinsonisms, yeah. So, um, yeah. The moringa tree is also a green supplement. No, moringa is lovely. Just a little bit because it it's, can be laxative. Yeah. But it's got all the amino acids. Absolutely. It's in... Um, I've got a smoothie boost and I've put it in differently, but uh, it doesn't come up specifically here, but thank you. Yeah. Alright, so these are the kind of things that support you food-wise, and then um, from a super herb point of view, that, that macunia is good. Protein, we need to have it. We can't not have protein. Um, blue green algae, the medicinal mushrooms, goji berries, maca, bar for one, they're all complete proteins. And then there's your other, there's your other pathway. <coughs> Tryptophan is also an amino acid. 5-HTP is now Schedule 5. Profonia is the herb. And so we can't get it. And so I think Profonia somnolifolius or something. Simplicifolia. So um, the thing was, I think it was a bit, of, a bit abused. And they, and so, yep, they've made it schedule for like another one. Tryptophan's also being Also, when it's taken off, it's been made that you need it. So that's another whole story. But how we can up it? Uh, cacao, unbelievable. Maca, again. What is it? Peanuts, again. Um, bananas, also. And then the algaes will also increase tryptophan. Spirulina is amazing, by the way. It's the most inexpensive one of all of them. It's got all the amino acids. It's got essential fatty acids, the omegas. The ancient Aztecs lived on spirulina and him. That gave them those bones. I've taught spirulina for years. And I started buying cell food and things like that instead. Okay. And I was just thinking that, I don't know, I was thinking that I was spending a lot of money on other stuff, so I thought I'd mm -hmm. rather take the self food, which is like, you know, can be wonderful. All doctors say, yeah, 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 as opposed to spirulina. I don't know if it's a direct, comp I don't think you're comparing apples with apples. The self food is, I mean, it is oxygenating your blood and stuff. I was just concerned it's more with the spirulina, you just don't know what's in it, because, you know, you don't, you don't know where it's been grown. It's possible, it's fresh water, it's not in the sea, so. Yeah. These algae are all fresh water algae, but that's true. So you think spirulina should go back to spirulina? You get a good source. I mean, yeah, because then you know that the, the purity is there and the concentration is there. Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a good one. So, and hemp seeds I haven't mentioned as a food, but it's really is a super food. Um, spirulina and hemp. So you're saying spirulina and hemp you take together and that's good? Absolutely. Good. Make a, make a hemp milk. Soda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, get a high vibrational food that's not processed. A tablespoon of hemp seeds, a tablespoon of spirulina, and a wheat gas shot, you're nearly on 20, milli 20 grams of protein for your day. Yeah. So that's good for you. 
information. So you get the hemp seeds, not the powder. Hey? The, seed, the powder's got all the oil removed. The seeds. And then you whir, whir it up in your blender with some water, a bit of cacao, depending if you've got candida or not, you can put some dates in there, a little bit of honey, um, and you have a superb protein drink. Cacao every day. It's the number one um, magnesium containing plant on the planet. And by the way, magnesium is converted to calcium in our body as our body needs it. So rather get away from we need calcium, we need magnesium. And that's the calming one. Keep calm and eat, cho eat chocolate and keep calm. So we've got some chocolates here too. What I've done is I've put all these things into chocolates. So using chocolate as the carrier. Sounds terrible. But I want you to make them, because for me to make them is... But why? I'm teasing. It's perfect. I mean, no, it's just amazing. So I want you to make them, so you go and buy your stuff. It's easy, with cocoa, cacao butter and coconut oil and a bit of um, honey. And then add the things, whatever you want to do. And make your own chocolates. It's just the best. And then forget about the board chocolate, because that's... A heated cacao, so all the minerals and the enzymes and that are gone. It's made with rancid fat. You will get pimples. You will get fat. All that sugar. These ones you won't. And I think that's, that's about it. Okay. Sorry, just here's some more food for both the pathways. Which I think we beat through most of them. These are valerian penny. Brazil nuts for a day, wonderful. It's got selenium and zinc. Selenium, zinc, and the B vitamins are good for these neurotransmitter pathways. Folic acid. Okay, so there's another book here as well by Sarah Gottfried, The Hormone Cure, which I've also found. She's also researched this, she's on, on the pulse there. I understand that you said you were going to talk about your organite, but I wanted to ask. Um, with regards to that is, uh, you keep mentioning using high vibrational foods and so on. Um, do you do anything beyond your organite to, whilst growing it or whatever, to, to, to allow it to form as a high vibration or anything? Or okay, organite is a resin. Yes, no, I know what organite is. Um, but I mean, we use crystals, so I'm wondering if you use something Put crystals else. inside it. Yes, no, I understand mm. that. Yeah. There's, but there's people that use pyramids as well. People build yeah. like copper pyramids and they build, uh, they put that over their garden and that yes. actually conducts both sunlight and energy in straight into where the, the plants are growing. And rain. Yeah. The, my friends make a rain conductor with mm -hmm. copper wire and this whole big organite in the bottom. Okay. And it worked in Swaziland, we saw. Yes. Yeah. So this is not working in a in the linear um, space. It's not working. Um, like for example, if you brought an electromagnetic machine wouldn't pick this up. This is working more on a, on a much higher vibration. And, a, and what it does is, and I also wear, wear that, um, it, it um, creates an energy field around you that protects you from electromagnetic radiation and it helps you ground. Taking your shoes off and walking on the ground will also ground you. I've got it around my whole property in the veggie gardens. Um, I put it at my bees and I double the yield. The bees don't know about what this is. So, yeah, I did. So that, and I don't make this, so this is a, a thing from my friends. Okay, so let's just see. Um, while yeah, you were going to talk about the ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, sure. It's, it really is a lot to talk. How are we doing time wise? What is the time? It's 24 minutes past. Okay, fine. So we'll end up with this and some other questions, and then we'll announce the next talk. Okay, these are effective microorganisms. Who's heard them? Who's taken them? Who knows what they are? Okay. Vet? Okay, okay, yeah. Vet's got very close to home for her. It's a living organism that uh, enhances swirl, makes the swirl strong. Okay, could everyone hear yes. that? Living organisms. Beneficial bacteria, fungi, and yeasts which enhance the soil, they create humic acid and fulvic acid in the soil, which is another whole lecture on its own. <laughs> That's very high vibrational stuff, right? So if the soil doesn't have it, it doesn't produce it and it's, it's not optimum, we also need it. So we also need the effective microorganisms to create that compost inside us. Now, what I said to you earlier is that 
the Chinese consider our intestines as actually a, another brain. In fact, more important, I think, your gut feel. <coughs> and we have more serotonin receptors in our gut than we have actually in our brain. And effective microorganisms increase the secretion of serotonin. Amongst other things, amongst building our immune system, amongst scavenging uh, heavy metals, amongst creating our own humus and fulvic acid inside us, amongst um, clearing away pathogenic bacteria, candidas, viruses and so on, balancing our, our um, blood even. It's amazing, it's inexpensive. You can get, Thomas Linders makes one, Alan Rosenberg's makes one. Does Thomas use the fish in his, the blue something? Yeah, yes. Does he? Does he? Not, not in the probiotic. In the probiotic, he um, doesn't use fish anymore. Okay. But in the agricultural one, he uses He does fish. use it in the fish. So there's a beneficial thing, because the blue sardine fish, anyway, they attract the photosen so photosensitive, all the photo-loving photo bacteria, light-loving bacteria, it will get them to grow. So this one here has got, actually is imprinted with uh, blue-green algae chlorella spirulina to do that kind of thing as well. So this is also a vegan one. Is that like Rafa? Hmm? You heard of something called Rafa? No. Have you, Ved? No. But you can come tell us about it afterwards if you want. So this you can take a teaspoon to a tablespoon three times a day. And it's a molasses base, and the um, mother stock is generally made from plant material, the fermented plant material. How does this relate to the probiotics that he was asking earlier about? Because I ferment kefir and I ferment kombucha, and we do a lot of crowds and stuff. Okay, thank you. That's wonderful. If anyone wants to know about sauerkraut and fermented food, it does compare, and you, you, you would take that. If, so if you're having your salad, you would have your sauerkraut with it. Do you quickly want to tell us how to make sauerkraut? Chop your veggies really fine, stomp a handful down, a little bit of salt, stomp it down, and put a weight on, and that's pretty much it. That's it. Make it anaerobic, mm -hmm. so the air yeah. can't get in. Okay. And then you'll have your sa okay. sauerkraut. Okay. We'll we'll talk on fermentation. That's yeah. not a bad idea, because we can do the kefir and the Absolutely. everything. It's a, this is oh, essential yeah. for our health. A really, really, it's essential. But um, Jane, Thomas always says, I mean, he actually makes it, but he always says that EM is a crutch that if one was eating enough fermented food like we used to do in the old days, we wouldn't need that. If we were walking yeah. with our bare feet on the soil, picking up the vitamin B, effective microorganisms synthesize vitamin B and vitamin K for us, which we all highly uh, deficient in. Mm -hmm. So if we're walking bare feet on our soil, we're going to be absorbing vitamins and minerals quite right. If we're eating the veggies straight out of the soil with just a little bit on, there will still be vitamin B there. Um, and, and if our diet was whole foods, yeah. and the fermented foods were included in our diet, which have been for eons, um, well, it is a crutch and it isn't. I think it's always been around. I think people would have made it because you ferment your raw material to yeah. create your mother's stock and then you feed it molasses. So yeah. it's been around in our world for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you said that the whole, the whole barefoot thing is something that a lot of people know about, the bare, the everything thing. Um, but now, if you if if that is a way of it getting into your body, then what does walking barefoot on things like asphalt and concrete and, and all that sort of stuff? It's fine. We're still it's Still, I'll tell you the problem is wood. Wood? Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, the earth's energy doesn't come through wood, and something like a synthetic carpet and that. But concrete is fine. Sure. Jane, my partner Craig always says that you won't get through the day with. Um, without being able to actually touch the compost, put his hands in the compost. And we make <coughs> we make our own compost. We grow 95% of our own vegetables. And there's never anything that goes to waste as a result. And I, I think that they've actually proven through research that compo compost, you do, um, you increase your serotonin when you touch it and yep. work with it. So it is something that I think everybody should, should manage. And even if you live in a flat, you can do it. No, and I mean it goes further. Some people heat their geysers with their compost. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just want to make sure, just before we do that, sorry, just before we go um, Sandra has some lovely aromatherapy oils that she's working on in progress. And there is one for, for neurotransmitters and the endocrine system and the hormone system. 
and she's got a, a concoction there. Go and speak to her. Um, so that's that's um, Sandra, and then Penny. We've talked about here. Yeah, we've got a lot of assortment thing there. I see these little bottles and tinctures and things as well. Do you want to say anything about them? Well, I've got a valerian root tincture, and I've got the clear tincture, which we've done because the clear is just so bitter that to take it in tincture form, it's just a lot less bitter to swallow. Um, I've also brought um, some um, red, uh, red clover uh, for people who want to try it, just in little little bags like that. Mindful of the plastic this time, and I'll change my packaging in future. <laughs> and then um, I've got some uh, valerian root, whole valerian root as well. Uh, and I've brought some uh, skeletium, different kinds of skeletium tortosum. Skeletium tortosum naturally balances both serotonin and dopamine um, levels in the body. So it works for a lot of things. Anxiety. Relaxes you, yeah. so it will reduce the yeah. cortisol levels and that. So that's a yeah. great one. So go and speak to Penny afterwards. Mm -hmm. There's a brochure here on a water in Lavana. It restructures and enlivens the water with volcanic rock dust and rock quartz and everything. It's a great thing to store into your house. Um, if anyone's interested, um, my, my garden is on show on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. Hmm. So it's a yellow pamphlet like this. You're welcome to come. We can chat about the sustainable sustainability and everything. And who else have I forgotten? I think that's about it. If there's any more questions, oh, we, we, we've done questions, right? I, I think if you have any more questions, maybe just at meet the up end. with Jane afterwards and we can continue after this. But I think let's do no, the thanks. announcements. So what we're going to do now is announcements and a lucky draw. And the next speaker. Yeah. And the next speaker. So shall we do the next, <laughs> the next speaker? speaker yeah. Okay, so we're going to have uh, Dr. Adam Cullinan, who's a chiropractor. And he uses this talk release technique. He studied and done courses around the world and how it affects the functioning of the nervous system and the release of new neurotransmitters and overall well-being. So it's going to unblock blockages and allow the, in that synaptic technique stuff, allow the neurotransmitters to get released and do what they need to do. It's non-invasive, it's gentle, it's, so it's not a chiropractor that we, you, yeah. So, and he's really experienced and he's in court. So he's, that's what we're going to be looking forward to on the 3rd of March. And then I'll just look forward to you guys putting forward as well. There's also um, Andre Brink, who's on the, probably the one up, but I won't spoil that right now. So, yeah. Um, and I really hope then that you have enjoyed this evening. I hope I've helped demystify it. Um, and if you worry, the best thing then is to go and get a lab assessment, and then you can go from there. Cause, but first, detox. Jane around the Thank you so much. I think we're in very competent hands with Jane running the Plant Healers Network from now on. I don't know about you. I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm sure Jane will be posting um, a lot of information on Plant Healers about her products as well. And also, guys, you know, if you can make a consultation to see Jane, I think it's a very good idea. But um, we're going to be feeding information into the Plant Healers Network. I'm definitely going to be pulling out of it because I think you're in very good hands here.